we have an equation for the force of gravity. It is equal to mass times the acceleration of gravity. In other words, we can rearrange this and get g, the acceleration of gravity, equals the force of gravity divided by the mass. This would be the gravitational field. You're familiar with the gravitational field. We've lived in it most of your lives. Pretty much. Give or take a little bit. We also have an equation for the electric force, which is equal to Q times E, the electric field. Notice the similarity. Force of gravity equals mass times the acceleration due to gravity. The electric force equals Q times the electric field. Q takes the place of the mass, and E, the electric field, takes the place of the acceleration due to gravity. In other words, the electric field, by definition, is equal to the electric force divided by charge. So if we have the electric force on something, we can divide that force by the charge and get the electric field at that particular location. If we're dealing with a point charge, then the electric field is going to be equal to 1 over Q times K times Q1 times Q2 over R squared. That Q is going to cancel out, and the electric field that surrounds a point charge is equal to KQ over R squared. <coughs> Bless you. The electric field. Now, what are the dimensions on the electric field? Mr. P. Newton. Newton's. Newtons per coulomb, right? Force divided by charge, newtons per coulomb is the electric field. Eventually we'll get to the point where we know that it's also volts per meter, but we're not there yet. Alright, so we have the electric field. So, please realize the electric field is always defined by a small positive test charge. The electric field is always defined by a small positive test charge. It is a small charge because if we're trying to determine what the electric field is, we don't want to change that electric field. And simply by putting a charge somewhere, we actually do change that electric field. So by making it as small as possible, that will change the electric field the least. And it is positive because somebody decided one day that it should be defined by a positive charge. That's it. It could be negative and everything would be different. But it's not. It's positive. It would. It would all be 180 degrees from what we think of it to be. Okay. All right. So we have electric fields. This is the electric field that exists around a positive charge. Note, KQ over R squared. This is a visual representation of this equation, KQ over R squared. If we were to take a charge and place it right here, we could figure out the force on that charge simply taking the KQ over R squared, the electric field, and multiplying it by Q. It would be KQ1, Q2 over R squared. Right? So this electric field is the, basically the field that would produce a force on a charge if you were to place it there. And this arrow identifies the direction of the electric field. Why is it out away from the positive charge? Nick. Going all the way back to the law of charges, right? Like charges repel. So if we were to take a small positive <laughs> test charge and place it right here, it would feel a force to the right. It would be repelled from the positive charge. If instead we deal with a negative charge, notice the shape is exactly the same. The direction is different. Because if we were to take a small positive test charge, it is going to be attracted. It's going to be pulled toward 
this negative charge. We're going to do a lot more with electric fields next time. Uh, we're going to define them a little bit better. So don't worry, I know at this point you don't quite have enough, but I can't do everything all at once. That would be bad for your brains. Here's the Earth. The gravitational field. Right? You're familiar with this. If we take a positive plate and a negative plate, this is called two parallel plates, and you're going to see a lot of them. And I take a small positive test charge and I place it right here. What is going to happen to that small positive test charge? And if it's going to go towards the negative. It's going to go toward the negative plate. I'll even say it's going to go away from the positive plate, right? Because it's going to be repelled from the positive plate and attracted toward the negative plate. In other words, the electric field at this point is actually going to be straight down. And the same is true all the way throughout. The electric field turns out to be constant between two parallel plates. This is the electric field. When you get outside the plates, it's going to look more like this. But between the two plates, it looks identical to what the gravitational field would look like above the surface of the planet. Note the similarities. I'm going to do this a lot to try to get, get you to understand the electric field. The gravitational field is one that you have a lot of familiarity with. The electric field is one that you do not quite have as much. Again, if we take a look at our at the Earth, only we look at it from a perspective that's a little bit farther away, this is what the gravitational field looks like. Oops. If I simply take and put a negative charge, notice that the negative charge follows the exact same pattern for its electric field as the gravitational field around an object like the Earth. 